Hi, it's uh, Mike Stevenson here. So in a previous video, we looked at um, two scenarios about a logic app um, authenticating against a zero AD, passing the um, passing the token to API management, and then val we were doing some validation of the um, of the roles and stuff in that um, call to, to a zero AD. And we had two scenarios. We had one where we just a client credentials authenticate and then we had another one where we used the managed identity and we set up the enterprise application so we looked at how we could build that with terraform and um, and then how we might use it now what i want to do in in this video is uh, we're going to have a little bit of a look at um slightly different scenario here so i want to look at my echo token um, operation here on my API. So what I've got is um, I've got this this sort of help out policy, which uh, I think we're still having the same problem we were having earlier, where that policy is not displaying. So we'll just have a look in the Terraform code instead. Um, so here we've got the the Echo token, and and what that really does, it um, you know, we've got the API defined up here, the operation, um, the policy, we're just checking the token we received from my Azure AD tenant. And then we've just got a bit of inline C sharp here where we're going to just um, process the JWT uh, token and just serialize that out to JSON and return it. So I just want to have a look what's actually inside that token. Now, what I want to do is um, in... So where are we in this logic app here i've got this token check demo um i'm just going to open another screen so we can have a look side by side the runtime and the configuration so what i wanted to show was um, a number of different ways you can configure the actions and how they would respond so here at the top i've got um so on on a zero AD, you've got two endpoints for getting a token so you've got the the auth to token endpoint and then you've got the um, the auth to version two token endpoint, and they kind of respond slightly differently. So what I wanted to do was just show if we go through a number of scenarios. So firstly, we're going to call and get a token, and we're if you make a note of this um, the scope that we're passing in. So we're going to pass in the client ID here, and then I'm just going to call my echo token, and and just see what the token looks like that comes back. We're going to then call, get a token, but this time we're going to use the token identifier with the default. So the token identifier, just to be aware, is, um, so if I bring this in here, it's the slight difference depending on how you configure the action. You can either use the GUID for the client ID, or you can um, have a a kind of URI specified. I'm actually looking at the wrong one there. We want this roles one. So you can have this um, either this GUID here, or you can specify the the API uh, the application ID URI up here. So you, depending on like what scenarios you do, and you might use um, one of these in a different way. And, and really, what you need to look at is the audience and the token that you validate in as your uh, sorry in API management needs to match the one that you've got in the token. So we'll have a look through that as well and just show what the, the different options look like. Um, we're then going to call the, the version 2 endpoint here and just ha ha again have a look at the differences. And then what we're going to do is we're going to post, we're, we're going to use the the target GUID here and, and configure the APIM action with um, with the auth set up here. So it's going to use just the GUID then we're going to do it with the GUID plus slash dot default. Um, then we're going to do the target identifier. And then the target identifier plus slash dot default. And then we're going to use the managed identity with, with again, those various um, different scenarios. You can see here the audience is slightly different each time. We want to just run this and have a look at what, um, what it actually looks like. Okay, so you can see we ran through, we had a couple of errors, which is expected, and we'll talk about them in a minute, but we'll go through and have a look what happens with each one. So here, if you notice when I'm doing the get token, so my, 
scope was um, the GUID and then slash default. And then that gives me back um, a token here. I can pass that token and call the token endpoint. So the first thing to notice is um, we've got a, a few things up here and we've got a, a version one token down at the bottom. So I think we're okay there. Custom identifier one here. So this is where we pass in the scope. This time is the um, application URI and slash default. And again, if we post that, you'll notice, um, you know, we get our token back. We've got a V1 token, um, and I think we're, we're kind of okay there. Now, the, I guess one thing to notice here is the audience is slightly different there. So just be kind of be aware of that. That might cause you problems on the validation. That was getting the custom token. Um, this time we've got the V2 endpoint. So you can see here we've got the V2 endpoint. This time we're passing in the scope of... Um, the GUID with the dot default, and then we kind of have a look at the token we get back. So we've got this time we've got the audience specified. So that's the GUID here that matches. Um, if we have a look, so we have to go back up here. So that matches the GUID we've passed in here. Notice it doesn't have the slash dot default on the end. Um, and if we go down the, the list of claims. And we've got a version one token at the bottom, so just make a note of that. Okay, I'll just close a few of these down. And then the V2 endpoint with the custom ones, this time the scope is that. And if you notice, um, when we call the, the echo token, this time our audience is, is this audience, which is the one we passed in, but without the dot default. And again, we've got a V1 token. So key point so far is, you know, just be clear that the, the audience that you pass in is what's in the token. So that's going to need to match what APIM is validating against. Now, if we do the auth here with, with just the GUID, so we can see in the audience we've specified just the GUID here. And this should be the same as one of the scenarios earlier. So we've got our audience specified here. And the audience claim. And again, we've got the V1 token. This time we're doing audience. So first thing to note there, we just passed in just the GUID. We could also here, we can pass in um, the GUID plus dot default. And if you notice this time, the audience claim has the dot default on the end. So we need to kind of just be aware of that subtle difference where... We passed in dot default here, but then up, up earlier on when we passed in the you know the original v1, we passed in the dot default there. But then when we check the token, if you remember, we had um, so the audience here was was kind of slightly different. Um, so we need to be aware of that um, subtle difference there. So obviously that connectors doing it something slightly different behind the scenes which is um, something we'll look to explore in the future if we now pass in target um, plus default i think we've just looked at so you know the key thing is that the, the audience is slightly different from our validation this time we're passing in the target identifier so if you see here we're passing in just that target identifier without any sort of end um, suffix on the end and you can see our audience that came back is exactly as we passed in still the version one token now the one that's that fails here if you notice this time i passed in the audience plus dot default which i'm getting back an error saying um it's not found in that tenant now if you remember back at the start when we did this um, kind of manually, so we passed in custom identify here, and we did the dot default on the end, and actually we got a token back for that one. So we need to be aware that when we do that with the version one endpoint and the version two endpoint here, um, we we both both times we got tokens back. So you can see there. So that's obviously a difference there between 
the APIM connector. Um, so let's just go down a minute. So the APIM connector, when we're configuring the auth, that audience is, you know, it's not working here if we've got slash default, but it does if we do it um, earlier on where we're calling to get the token directly ourselves. Next up, we've got the target GUID. So here we're passing in an audience that's just the GUID, and this time we're using a managed identity here. So we've configured, um, if I'll just go into the code and show. So this managed identity one, we, we're just following up from the previous video. We've specified the managed identity for that we've assigned the logic app. And we're just passing in here the, um, the target identifier, the client's ID for the target, and also that slash default on the end. And we can see here, again, if we pass in the target identifier, just there, that one works okay, and we get back a... You know, we get back the audience as we expect, get back the V1 token. But if we pass in the target identifier with that dot default on the end, um, we, we got an error for that one saying it doesn't exist. So there, there's definitely behind the scenes some of how the connectors um, handling the auth slightly different to when I'm doing it manually at the top. And I think the key takeaways I wanted to show here is uh, if you want to have a look in the Git repo, you'll be able to see how each of these actions are configured. But the key thing is that there's just some subtle differences in how the connectors um, handle what you specify as the audience to be. And then if we go think back to um, you know, where we saw, think back to APIM here. So my security POC API. So in the previous video we saw how when we want to validate the JWT token. That's still not coming. I think there's something not happy with APIM today, so we'll have a look over here. So we did this um app reader check on one of the API operations elsewhere in the demo. So if we're checking the audience, the key thing I need to sort of <clears throat> decide is what, what audience should I be using here? So if I'm getting a token with a GUID, I need the GUID to be what's displayed in the audience here. Whereas if I get the token with that app URI, I need the app URI to be what I'm validating here. And, um, and obviously in the previous video, we took it a bit further with things like role checking and stuff. But I think that consistency around how you configure the connector versus what you've got configured in the API is quite an important thing to make sure you've got lined up. Um, let's see if API M, that still hasn't come up. Okay, so hopefully um, that video just gives you a little bit of um, additional background as to how these different connectors will react based on how they're configured. Um, and I think we'll probably add a couple more videos in due course as we play around a bit more with the, the auth configuration between APIM, Azure AD and Logic Apps. Thank you for listening.